Dr. M.P. Washington, again, blessed to come to you with the word of the Lord from our Sunday school lesson today. I give God the glory each time he has afforded me the opportunity to sit before you or to stand before you and expound on what he has given me. I just want to say as we begin to uh, elaborate on the word of God this morning, ever, ever, never, ever, never, ever, ever, never. Take it for granted that God gives you opportunity because anything could happen at any time. But God has granted me this day and I am the Lord's prophetess and I am blessed to bring you today's lesson. Today's lesson is entitled, Lest We Forget. The scripture today is coming from the book of Deuteronomy, the eighth chapter. We finally finished, amen, the book of Ezra and we finished the building of the temple, but now we're going back to Deuteronomy. I pray that you're blessed by today's lesson. I'm looking forward to hearing what the Holy Spirit would give to us today. The scripture begins in Deuteronomy 8 and 1. And the commandment which I command thee this day shall ye observe to do, that ye may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers. So the Lord is saying that the commandment he's given, not necessarily uh, to just be quoted on uh, and to just be meditated on, but they are uh, compact with power, compact with the will of God, compact with the means of God. How do I know this? He said, because these commandments, amen, if they would do them, amen, that they would live. And living implies that they would have fellowship with him through the process of doing what he says to do. He said not only would they live, but he said they would multiply and they would go in and possess the land. Going in to possess the land, meaning that whatever comes up against you, whatever enemy come to impede God's will in your life and try to stop your destiny. If you meditate on the word of God and obey the word of God, you shall possess your land. It's all in the word. The scripture says in Hebrews 1 and 3 that God upholds all things by his word. He says in Psalms 138, amen, that he has established his word above his name. So we, we find that here uh, uh, the, the prophet is talking to a people who had not yet experienced the blessing of the word. I say that because most of these people who are going into the promised land are people who were born in the wilderness. Those who came out of Egypt were so disobedient. The Lord gave them 40 years to walk in a circle. 40 years, amen, until the unbelievers died out. And when the unbelievers died out in the wilderness, amen, these are their children who are embracing what they had not been uh, 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 inundated with. They had no idea what it was to, amen, be given a promise and what it was to obey God. Amen. I say this because you are always going to assimilate your parents' lifestyle. These are children of the disobedient. Nevertheless, God has given them an opportunity. You don't have to be what your mother was. You don't have to be what your father was. And you could be an even greater. Depends on your rearing, how you were reared. 
these people, amen, are those of whom the Lord is given another opportunity to come and to be obedient. Amen. Deuteronomy 8 and 2 says, And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness. Amen. 40 years of being led in the wilderness. If I'm not mistaken, it took 40 years to make what should have been an 11-day journey. What are you stagnating today because of disobedience? What, amen, are you prolonging? What blessing have you stopped or hindered because you're out of the will of God? Why are you walking in a wilderness crying, Lord, help me? You know, that's amazing that some folk always seem to know how to cry out to God, but they don't want to change their way. You must take some inventory today and see if you are in alignment with the promises that you desire to, ma to manifest. I say that because the promise of, promise of God is unbreakable. The promise of God is undeniable, but it's not unblockable. Disobedience, the weight of sin, will block you from inheriting the promise of God. Now here we find the Lord telling why the children of Israel had to go round and round in the wilderness for 40 years. Deuteronomy 2, 8 and 2. The scripture says that the Lord sent them through the wilderness first to humble thee and to prove thee and to know what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldst keep his commandment or no. So the purpose of the trial, the purpose of the, the stagnation, the purpose of the uh, confrontation with self, because truly this was a confrontation with self. A lot of times we want to say it's the devil. Well, if it is the devil, it's the devil that's in you. Because faith quenches all the darts of the enemy. And if faith have not quenched, quenched your thoughts and your darts, it's because, amen, you have chosen to be outside of the hedge of God. God will humble you. God will give you an opportunity to prove what is in your heart. You can't say what's in your heart. You have to do what's in your heart. Because we will lie and say whatever is convenient. Not necessarily just because we're evil. A lot of times we lie and say what is convenient out of fear, anxiety, not knowing how to answer. It's a lot of reasons why. But nevertheless, the Lord said that the trial come, the wilderness come, to humble you, to prove you, so that he may know what's in your heart. Amen. This is what he said in Deuteronomy 8 and 2. Let me go on. Amen. Verse 3 says, And he humbled thee, and suffered thee to hunger, and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers know that he may make thee know that man doth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. It seems that the Lord has done something with the children's uh, children, with the grandchildren, if you will, with the millennial. He's allowed them to hunger. And he's allowed them to hunger so that he could rain bread from heaven. God wants to show himself in your life. So every situation that manifests, everything that comes your way, that you seem uh, to have to go through a trial as a result of, may seem arbitrary to your personal desire. It's not always from the devil. Just as the Lord wants you to prove you, he wants to prove him too. He wants to prove himself in your life. Will you allow God to prove himself in your life? One of the scriptures that have caused me to hold on in any trial, hold on through any wilderness, through any valley, in any shadow of death, is Romans 6 and 16. Where the scripture says, To whomsoever you yield your members to obey, that's whose servant you are. So I have made up my heart, my mind, my soul, my strength 
that I yield myself to God. That's who servant I am. So whatever happened to me, God is in control. God is in charge. And everything that happened to me will manifest for my good. I won't be so soon shaken in fear. Amen. I want to give you a good word today. Learn to suspend your thoughts about what you're going through. Ask the Lord to set a watch over your mouth and keep the doors of your lips until you've had the opportunity to stop and consult God about what you're going through. Learn how to stand in the stillness. The stillness is a place where there's a total trust in God. Well, you don't know what's going on. You can't perceive what's going on. But you've made a decision that since you yield your body, your members to obey God, then whatever has come to your life, God is in control of it. And if you stand still, you shall see the salvation of the Lord. Don't be so soon shaken. Every trial from God come back in power. Every trial sent from God comes to deliver a promise to you. There's no promise being manifest outside of the fire. Promises have to stay pure. Hearts have to stay clean. Amen. So the Lord had done this. Amen. Let me read on. I'm reading amen in Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 4. Thy raiment waxed not old upon thee, neither did thy foot swell these 40 years. Hallelujah. In other words, in what you thought was overwhelming, take some inventory. You see the mighty hand of God. You see that God always provided. You see. Hallelujah. But sometimes because we don't get our way and we don't get immediate gratification and we have to suffer at some point. All we can see is the suffering and the pain. We can't ask ourselves, what is God doing? Oh my, can't you hear the rain? I love the rain. God is nurturing in the rain. Hallelujah. Let me hurry on. The scripture says in Deuteronomy, verse 5, Thou shalt also consider in thine heart, that as a man chasteneth his son, so the Lord thy God chasteneth thee. Therefore thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God, walk in his ways, and to fear him. For the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains, and of depths that spring out of valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley and vines and, amen, fig trees, pomegranates, and a land of olive oil and honey, a land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness. Thou shalt not lack anything in it, a land whose stones and are iron, and out of those hills thou mayest dig brass. When thou eatest, thou art full, and when thou art blessed, the Lord thy God for the good which the land he hath given thee. Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes, what I command thee this day. Amen, which I command thee this day. I bless the Lord for the scripture today because the Lord is just, amen, reiterating the life that we all have in the realm of obedience. Everything in God is predicated on your obedience. Hallelujah. And I even, amen, if you find it difficult to obey God, amen, that strength is in his word. God will give you strength. Amen. He said in Proverbs 16 and 3, amen. If you, if you feel that, amen, you're having a difficult time, if I may paraphrase it. He said, work for me and I will establish your heart, your thoughts, amen. In other words, amen, if you're having a hard time in your mind, if you're wrestling and, and you don't know what's up ahead, get your hands busy in the things of God. If you work for the Lord, the Lord will grant you your desire, amen. 
This is a beautiful land. The land that we know is called the kingdom of God. And I want to invite you to come in the kingdom of God. But the scripture says that the only way you can enter the land, which is now the kingdom of God, is that you be, amen, born of the water, which is, which is the washing of the word, and born of the spirit, which is the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Many people claim to be in the promised land, the kingdom of God. But going to church does not make you a kingdom citizen. Giving tithe does not make you a kingdom citizen. The only way you can be a kingdom citizen is to be born again. Hallelujah for our new birth. And the scripture says that our new birth is a spirit birth. It's a purged conscience birth. So you can't live, amen, doing your will, calling on the name of the Lord. You can't live, amen, doing what you think is right and asking God to forgive you because you think you're too weak to do what is told you to do. Amen. The difficulty in obedience is the stripping, the, the, the mortifying of the flesh. So if it hurts you to obey, let it hurt until the old man has decreased and a new man lives. Hallelujah. The title of our lesson today is, Lest We Forget. Don't forget. Don't you dare lose what you have wrought in the Lord because of disobedience. On the day you hear God's voice, harden not your heart. It's too much to lose if you forget what God has already taken you through. Be blessed today. I love you in the Holy Ghost. I want to ask today in Jesus' name, if you would visit me on my website, drmpwashington.com. There's some things I'd like to share with you. There's some things I'd like to give to you because I love you. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Once again, don't forget. with all of my mind. Ain't no sense in me 